So that's the drum rack start to finish. But now I'm using some things outside of the drum rack that are also helping my percussion to sound fatter. One of these things is I'm using distortion. I have Isotope Trash here, which is a distortion and guitar amp model. And I just have active here the Trash function, which is the distortion model. And one of the things I like about Trash is it's multiband. So you can go single band or you can have it be multiband. And this means that I can apply different distortion types to different frequency ranges. If I want to add a band, I can literally right click on it and go insert band, or I can remove a band. In this case, I don't want to be adding any distortion to my kicks. My kicks, I find they sound way better and way more punchy when they're clean. So what I've done here is I've set the band to start at about 180 hertz, and I'm bypassing trash, which means the clean signal will pass through. So no processing is happening to my kicks and my low end. And if we go to the upper end, you can see I'm using a drive tube drainer model, and I have the overdrive cranked up. But if I had this running on its own on the drums, it would sound um, still pretty crunchy. So another feature that I love about Trash is it has a wet dry knob here, which allows me to control the amount of the dry signal versus the affected wet signal. And you can see I have it down pretty low. Let's just listen to the drums so I can show you what it sounds like wet versus dry and then show where I have it set. <laughs> So you can tell when it's over on the wet side, the percussion's sounding too crunchy and it's losing a lot of its punch. Whereas I, when I have it dry, it sounds clean. And I just have it here where it's just starting to be audible, where it does just add a little bit of sizzle to the percussion. So that's how I'm using trash. Now, I'm using some send and returns from my drum rack. Now, if we go over here, we can see that I have a couple of sends and a couple of return tracks. The first thing I'm using is a reverb on the entire drum track. So I have here, it's a UAD2. I love the UAD2. It's a, um, it's a hardware card that goes inside your computer and it runs a whole set of really high quality proprietary plugins that only run on that card. And uh, they're some of the most amazing sounding plugins I've ever heard. And in particular, this Realverb Pro plugin is my favorite reverb. And it has a setting on it here called Jazz Club. Jazz Club is like a very short room sound, and I don't really want too much of an audible reverb on this, but I do want to have some ambient, some room sound around the beat. So because this is set up as a send, I have my mix control to 100%, and then I have its internal resonance, or EQ here, rolling out the low end. So you can see I'm cutting out all the low end, because typically you do not want reverb on any type of bass element. You just want it kind of ha happening on the highs and the mids. So Again, like the other reverb I had set up within the drum rack, this one is using a compressor, and I'm compressing it to get a bit more of the uh, oomph to the sound because it's a short reverb. So to give an idea of what it sounds like, uh, the way I gauge my reverb is I'll crank up the send until I can really audibly hear it, and then I back it off until I can almost perceive it, but almost not. So I really don't want to have a, a lot of reverb happening because when you're playing dance tracks in a club or something, the, the room is going to have its own natural ambiance. So here, really, you're just adding a little bit of room sound, and it's, I find, more, uh, more effective for listening on home stereos and things like that where you're not in a club and getting the natural room sound. You do, you do want a little bit of ambiance around your elements. So let's just listen to it, and I can show you how I've found my setting. <laughs> So really just barely audible there, not too much reverb. All right, and the very last element is I'm running a compressor as a send. And this is a style of compression called New York or parallel compression. And what you do is you set up a compressor so it's really clamping down hard. You're getting some pretty massive compression. And you run it in parallel using a send because that way you can mix the wet and the dry signal together. And I find if you're running everything through a compressor and you're using really heavy compression, a lot of times you'll lose the front end punch to the beat and you'll lose some of the transient behavior. 
Whereas when you're running it as parallel or New York style, like this is called, you actually get all the fatness of the compression combined with the punch and the, the transients of the original beat. So in this case, I'm using again a special compressor that runs only on the UAD2 card. And this is a physical model of an old style compressor that you see in a lot of, uh, a lot of studios. It's called a um, Yuri 1176. And what this company's done is they've completely recreated it using a digital version. And this one has some specific settings. So I'm increasing the amount of input. This one has a fixed threshold, so I'm really driving against the input. You'll be able to see the gain reduction that's happening here on the meter. The other thing is this compressor has a special mode on it. So here we have ratio buttons. And I can go 4 to 1 ratio, 8 to 1, 12 to 1, or 20 to 1 ratio. Or it has this special mode where if I shift click, all buttons go down at the same time and it's this famous kind of setting on this compressor and it gives a very unique sound and I like the way it sounds using it in New York style on my drums. Then you can see it has attack and release knobs and on this compressor the higher I turn up the knob the faster the attack and release are. So before the compressor again you can see I'm running an EQ and I'm rolling off about 50 Hertz down and again, this is because I don't want any super low end coming into the compressor and affecting our signal. So again, I'm doing a, a low cut. So let's just play the drum beat and you can see what this sounds like. So this meter right here is showing our gain reduction. And now I'm just going to play with the send so you can hear what it sounds like uh, once we get it audible and then back it down to where my setting is. And now I'm just going to throw it in with the original vocal so you can hear what it all sounds like together, the completed beat with the little vocal section that I've looped from Decline's original track. And here's what our beat sounds like. So, I am Vespers, uh, Ableton Live certified trainer, music producer, and performer. And uh, that is my process about how to write fat beats uh, hip hop style using Ableton Live and some drum racks. So, hope you enjoyed the tutorial and uh, catch you on the next one. Cheers.